On this 13th day of August 2018, welcome back to Morning Express. In case you're joining us now, well, welcome aboard. It's time for us to look at what's making headlines on the dailies. I do have a very well and able panel to do that this morning, and I'll start by introducing them before we look at the dailies. To my extreme left, we have Honorable Irungo Kangata, who is a senator. He's also the deputy, deputy uh, whip in the Senate. Good morning, and thank you for joining us. Thank you. We also have Michael Agwanda, who is a governance consultant. Thank you for joining us, Michael. Good and last but not least, Ambrose Weda, who is a lawyer. Thank you for joining us too. And we go straight to what's making headlines on the dailies. And as usual, <coughs> we'd like to start off with the standard. We've got a picture of a man who has definitely uh, hit the headlines a number of times uh, in the last few months. And this is because of cracking the whip. What we're talking about, this is the DPP. And it is none other than Nudin Haji. Now, the headline is, who is next? on the DPP's list. And gentlemen, we certainly have seen a consistent uh, war on um, what was termed as the big fish. Previously, Kenyans were complaining that we have no big fish uh, being fished out by the DPP in terms of war and corruption, but we've seen that happen with the latest um, towards the end of last week being um, Mahmoud Swazuri, the NLC chair. So. Weda, let me start with you. Who do you see next on the list if we would follow <laughs> this uh, question by the standards? I, I think the, 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 the DPP is doing a, a good job. At least people would be very scared about taking uh, big money. Some people who are asking what to do. Now it seems... Uh, There's something a, being done. The only thing is that I think uh, the, 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 the CID are doing drama. Uh, they arrest people in a manner that shows bad faith. You go and arrest people either on Friday or, or, or Saturday. Uh, they picked a lady in Mombasa where we were for the LSK conference, uh, leaving a baby of five years old. They picked her. There was no need to do that. It would have just been someone who was a lawyer. But I think the people, they are saying here that uh, there will be people from KRA. Mm -hmm. uh, from, uh, I think KRA is the place where... Everybody works and they become instant millionaires. Mm -hmm. <laughs> instant millionaires, you'll see, uh, all over. Um, uh, it, 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 it seems that uh, uh, that is on the line. The question of sugar is hovering. Mm -hmm. So there, 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 there will be action. But so far, you're, you're satisfied, you're happy with the work that the D DPP is doing? I, I, think, I think for the country, it is good. The work is doing is good. I've said it is only the way the... Uh, the officers themselves. Yes, they are acting in bad faith. Mm -hmm. It's like they arrest you so that you have to sleep in custody. Mm -hmm. And they fear if you are taken, if you are arrested on Monday and taken to court, then maybe you will be released on bail, and and and, and that is not good. For them. that is the bad faith element. They should be working towards collecting good evidence, taking it to court in good time, pushing the matter in good time. If the evidence is enough, you are convicted, and uh, you are arrested in a decent, careful manner, because at that stage you are still deemed uh, innocent until guilty. But I think the DPP has cracked the whip, which is good for the country. We had sunk so low on matters of corruption to the extent that our own children think that it doesn't matter money. What matters is do you get the money? Mm -hmm. And if you are not caught, and if you are not uh, uh, the, 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 the caught and charged, you're fine. And you're we fine. have elected such leaders. Mm -hmm. And we love them. And we, we, we sing for them because of their money and big cars. Mm -hmm. And we never bother to say uh, uh, so and so was just uh, uh, from school the other day. He's just an MCA. When he was here, he was on a bicycle. How comes in three months? He's, he's now worth okay. 100 million. Which speaks to the lifestyle audit uh, which the president ordered. Let me come to you, Senator. And uh, I'm sure as a Jubilee member, you're very happy with what is happening. But do you see somebody else or do you, who would you see next on the list? Are there areas that possibly uh, there has been wanton graft that possibly have not been visited yet that you'd expect would be visited? Yes, uh, from where I sit, I think National Lands Commission, more arrests should be made, in particular in uh, relationship to uh, the scandal of uh, Roaraka. Uh -huh. So, from where, uh, for instance, I expect uh, the people behind that scandal to be arrested, to be taken to court. I also foresee several arrests at uh, Kenya Pipeline, 
Uh, I think there's uh, quite a lot of uh, co corruptions which has been highlighted by the Office of the Auditor General. There are a lot of procurement issues at Kenya Pipeline. And uh, of course, I also foresee a situation where uh, some agencies under the Roads Ministry, mm -hmm. uh, for instance, maybe Kera, for instance, maybe Kura, I also foresee a problem in uh, Kenha. Uh, in a ministry which has been handling a lot of billions, you'll, more often than not, you'll find there was some form of corruption. Some form of corruption. So I foresee more arrest along that line. Okay. And finally, and most importantly, the sugar scandal. Mm. Uh, I foresee some arrests in that. And, and it will come to the behavior, you know, of the members of parliament with the accusation, uh, <coughs> the fact that they were compromised. But I'll come to that. But let me first of all hear from Michael Aguanda. It is all good that there seems to be a very deliberate war against corruption. And this time, not just on, uh, you know, what we'd call the messengers, but the actual, uh, you know, people at the top. But the question then would be, what do you expect? Because it would be dramatic to have all this happen, but have them go scot-free. Mike, first of all, I have to really uh, put my support on the, the new DCI and um, the Director of Public Prosecution. Uh -huh. And I think Alaki Wako, ESCC Director, is finally finding himself not having a big voice, and now he has to act, because if he doesn't act, there are a lot of voices out there that are saying this office is invalid. It should not be there. They're taking public offers uh, money and they're not delivering uh, according to the expectation of, of, of the Kenyans. ESCC will have been at the forefront to fight corruption in this country. But it's been riddled with ping pong and even to an extent of their own director being accused of malpractice. And where you find that the top has already been accused, uh, you know, there's very little you can expect from that organization. And so they've been tainted. They have to redeem <coughs> themselves by being seen to be doing something. My prayer, however, Mike, is that these cases will find validity in terms of evidence in the courts of law and these people that have been accused to have stolen and stashed billions of Kenyan shillings will go to jail one day. And so I think, and, and by the way, this weekend, as, as KRA was, uh, no, not KRA, but uh, Kenya Railway officers and National Land Commission's officers were put, uh, you, know, uh, you, know, you know, at the ESCC cells. Uh, every bar in this country and every church worship place was discussing who is next. And I can tell you, Mike, that's a very legitimate question. Who is next is what we need to discuss. How do we find who is next? Perhaps we need to start even looking at the social media. Who are the Kenyans saying, this is the most corrupt policeman we need to get out here? Or this is the most corrupt police, uh, I mean, uh, uh, National no, Land Commission officer we need to get out there. Mm -hmm. Kenyans know who is corrupt. When we are talking about who is next, then perhaps we need to start saying parliament is next. Because if you look at what is happening in Parliament, there are some crooks there. They, they, they are called honorable, and they're not honorable they're at all. Dishonorable. They're very dishonorable. In fact, this word now, we need to start looking at this word and what it means if we can call everybody that goes to Parliament honorable. Because if parliamentarians will be accused, and some of their colleagues saying, yes, we saw some people being bribed <coughs> at 30,000, then what can't they do in this country? If 30,000 is what they spend in maybe a day or two on fuel alone, and the government still reimburses you for that, why would you go for 10,000, 30,000, and shoot down a bill that that is affecting millions of Kenyans' life. Farmers mm. who are not able to take their children to school, the factories have been closed, and, and they're not talking about it. I mean, it's like, yes, we've imported sugar, what, um, enough for two years. That means the farmers, for the next two years, you go home and rest, nobody's paying you a uh, dividend or anything to tell you don't farm sugar because we have enough sugar in this country. And so parliament will be next. Another place that you want to go to is KQ. KQ you, if you're not careful, it's going to go under. And the only way that KQ must be managed well is that the people that are corrupt in KQ and malpractices of tenderpreneurs in, 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 in KQ must also be exposed. When we're talking about land issues in this country, it's not just emotive. 
People are going to people's land in this town and they are saying, this is my land, here is my title deed, vacate, and yet you've been living there for the last 50 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do they do that without the help of National Land Commission? I agree with Mishimua. National Land Commission is one place that these people must go to because these are the people who have properties from the government. I mean, counties are now struggling. Where do we even build the houses of the governors? Because the land has been grabbed and they this land belonged to the government, mm. but they, you know, they can't they, put a hand in it because mm. it's already been grabbed. National Land Commission is one place that if it's not digitalized, in fact, National Land Commission must now be devolved so that all the land is managed by the county and not some people sitting in Nairobi, uh, you know, uh, 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 land office there and determining what is happening in Lamu, what is happening in Migori, and yet they don't even know where that land is mm. except the few officers are there. All right. Okay, can I comment? Yes, eh? Senator. He has raised uh, a very important issue which is not well discussed even amongst lawyers. Uh, KQ is a private entity. So meaning if you, if you mismanage it, you cannot resort to uh, prosecution. You can only resort to commercial disputes. Be that as it may, there, there are laws in the area what we call breach of trust which can at times attract criminal sanctions. Uh, I say that because we have some private entities which have acquired a public character, let's say like NACMAT. If you mismanage NACMAT, what happens to you? In other jurisdictions, they do prosecute under criminal law people who mismanage huge entities which have some public uh, impact. Mm -hmm. Probably we need to sit down and see what loopholes exist mm -hmm. so that people who manage private entities which are so big enough to affect the public order how they should be punished under our criminal law. Mm -hmm. As we speak, there are some lacunas because one argues those are private entities. If, if there's mismanagement, those are issues to be dealt with under civil law. But from where I sit, I think we need to tighten the law to ensure people can be taken to court notwithstanding mm -hmm. they are managing private entities. All right. And uh, I want us to also look at a few other stories that are in the dailies. And uh, allow me to just uh, deviate a little bit from politics because this is an issue that I think is of national interest. Just on page four, we have this woman that was battered by her husband over 500 shillings. Weda, yes. we are in a society that seems to be going down a very dangerous path when it comes to violence and just how we have conflict resolution. Remember last week or the week before, we had a video of a man who was beating his wife, literally yes. who was on the ground. There were people cheering. Yes. Uh, a few days later, we had uh, now a change of scenario where we had a woman. Yes. Now, beating again the husband or whoever this man was for 200 shillings. Yes. Now, here again, we have a woman who was battered. If you look at her face, honestly, this is a, a beast that must have, you know, she has, uh, was under for 500 shillings. Yes. Where are we heading as a society when we are not able to resolve small issues or issues that maybe look small to others, but possibly within, they're boiling over? I think that we must understand... Uh, um, uh, certain sicknesses in our societies there's certain illness that we take either to be bad manners or just rudeness or just being difficult uh, you know depression in bracket madness manifests in various forms mm. some are addicted to alcohol and we take it we think somebody's just joking somebody's just rude just somebody's mis just misbehaving be misbehaving we do not deal with it as a disease. And that goes to several other manifestations of depression. If you see somebody beating a, uh, somebody, it's not the 500. The 500 is the trigger. Mm. It's just trigger. These are welling up emotions which have been there, a form of sickness. If you see somebody beating up the, the other one, where somebody was beating up and kicking the wife, it's, it's sickness. And that's why when, when now you are caught and you are put down, you blame the devil. Sometimes we joke in, 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 in church that sometimes the devil also goes to God and complains that we blame him, too, blame much. him too much. We do things and we keep on saying, oh, the devil, the devil, the devil. <laughs> so you do this like this man, uh, the one who beat up the wife. Here he said, I, I really don't know what happened. I was drunk. But he willingly uh, took the alcohol. Drinking is not a defense, and it reflects the, 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 the underlying serious issues. Mm. But I would also tell this. 
You know strength is mental. Strength is not more physical. It is a belief. Some people beat you like this and say, beat me again. Sometimes you rise up and say, my brother, you don't go and drink, you come back here and you batter me and I say, beat me again. I tell ladies, it is time sometimes you rise. And if you are beaten, always, always, either you leave that relationship or you go for karate practice. The way men, women, we beat, we beat women more because we think they're weaker. Mm. That's why I don't keep on coming to threaten you with violence. Why? Because I know you'll fight me back. But I go home and I know she's weaker, so I keep on beating. Mm. A time has come when ladies themselves must, must also train so that when you bring unnecessary violence, you meet fire with fire. I, I'm not sure how that <laughs> home will run, but uh, there you go. It is worse to... when, when you're beaten like this, <laughs> yeah, that's like true. a broken. Yeah, that's true. Then, uh, well, <laughs> let's look at the Daily Nation as we try and manage time here, but uh, United Against Evil, and um, Gwanda, it looks like for once, we have a united front when it comes to at least the fight against corruption and some of the things that the president is championing right now on the daily nation. We have the headlines as united against evil, and we can see there the president. We have Uru Kenyatta. We have uh, Moses Wetangula and Musalia Mudavadi. Your thoughts on whether we actually have a united front, especially in terms of our leaders, in the fight against graft amongst one of the things, um, other things that maybe, you know, that has brought them together? The only chance that this country has had had uh, in a peaceful, coherent uh, governance was when Moi became the president and, of course, President Kenyatta. They did not find a lot of opposition. Yes, there was an opposition that particular time, but it wasn't so much as it's been in the last few years. When we look at the tenure for President Uhuru Kenyatta, in fact, his first term, President Uhuru Kenyatta will not do a single thing without finding a resounding opposition from the chief opposition leader of this country, who is a very powerful individual, and that is in the name of Honorable Raila. And let me tell you, we have previously tribalized corruption in this country to an extent that the members of parliament from that community will line up and do a press conference and say, this is our man, this is political, and for your information, he is not going to leave. And then from that pressure from members of parliament that you also need to pass few bills here and there on, on, in the interest of the executive, they will relent. And most cases, cases will also take years in fact, some cases have taken over 10 years before they ruled political cases. Golden Bug, we've not even seen the end of Golden Bug, and we are, we are here. I mean, many years uh, down the line. And so for you to find a time like this where the opposition leader also says, look, I really don't care. A member of my party, Ojamong, uh, I mean, Sospiro de Mong, I think, was taken to, uh, you know, to, to court just the other day because of 8 million. And and then, and then you never had the opposition leader say, look, I don't want you to touch my people here. You know, these are my people and this is political. You're fighting me as a person. No, no, no. He's coming out and saying, look, let the people who have been accused go to court and clear the name from the court. This is the perfect time. And I've seen President Uhuru saying, look, I'm already losing my friends because some of these properties, and that can tell you why some of these uh, properties were even built on repairing land, simply because some of these people were also connected. the presidents of, of the, you know, the president's friends. They're, they're, they're also the friends of state house. They're also the, the friends of, of the executive. And that means they were so powerful that if they went to the ministry of land and said, I want this to be changed. I mean, who are you? You lose your job the next day. And allow and me to so pause you there, Michael, because I want us to just take a short break and release our KTN home viewers. But the way it is, is coming up. And of course, we'll dig into that and get more into that. And especially the members of parliament and the fact that apparently they were bribed with as little as 10,000 shillings. And uh, of course, we're going to be discussing that right here on the way it is. It's now five minutes to seven. For our KTN home viewers, another, well, uh, Life and Style begins and different programming. The Entrepreneur, the Entrepreneur begins. And uh, for those of us on KTN Home, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, let us weigh in on the way it is. Remember, you're welcome to participate in this conversation and we'll give you how you can do that. But for now, we take that break. For KTN Home, we say goodbye.